Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. Today, it's almost impossible to pick up a technology-related magazine and not see the word Internet of Things. Well, the term itself was first coined back in 1999, when Kevin Ashton produced a paper dealing with the use of RFIDs in the supply chain. In other words, putting radio transmitters into products, thereby enabling us to track them from manufacture through to the consumer. In other words, we're now letting machines or things add to the data mix. Now, historically, the internet has received all its information from humans through the development of web pages, sending emails, etc., etc. But unfortunately, as humans, we're not necessarily the best to keep adding to this data mix in the real world. We're better off enabling machines to do so. So, if we can see then what the Internet of Things is actually is. Well, historically, our data networks or our computer networks really were comprised of large computers sitting away in rooms and only controlled by engineers in white coats. It was not really until the latter part of the 80s and into the 90s that we saw the personal computer dropping onto our desk. Through the end of the 90s into the noughties, we saw the growth in laptop computers. Now through tablets and smartphones, we as consumers can add and receive information from the internet. But to take that through to the next step, we want to build this connectivity into products, into machines, into things. Thereby, they too now can add into the overall data mix. So, how will this affect us? Well, let's just take a look at an example. Our alarm clock now will not only wake us up in the morning, but it potentially could connect through to the coffee machine, ensuring that when we walk downstairs, our freshly brewed coffee is available. The coffee machine itself may also deduce that it's running out of coffee beans, so it can connect through to the supermarket, altering your order. Likewise, the supermarket can receive your request amongst many thousands of requests from other consumers and therefore alter its order down to its supplier. Here we can see that machines are communicating with each other without the use or the requirement for us, the human, to become involved. An alternative may see you stuck in a traffic jam. Here we can see that various roadside sensors will detect this and can send that information back through to the control centre. The control centre, knowing about your journey and the journey of the other people stuck in the traffic jam, can now start to deduce alternative routes to try and spread the load across other roads, and thereby can send information down to your satellite navigation system, giving you the alternative route. We may also deduce you're going to be late to your meeting, so we could interconnect through to your diary and therefore change the time of your next appointment, possibly even informing other attendees. So, where will we see the Internet of Things? Well, we can see it in a whole host of different locations and different environments. Really, the breadth and the scope of this is endless. But some of the key areas that people are often talking about today is the use of the Internet of Things in things like healthcare, logistics, agriculture and education. So, in summary then, what is the Internet of Things? Well, we can describe it as the interconnection of uniquely identifiable devices within an existing internet architecture. Need to know more? Why not visit our store where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training? Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.